Golly, does it get any better than that? I paid her to say all those things. So, um, Guys, who's excited for the Masters? Okay. This side of the room gave me a little more than uh, this side. That's okay. Uh, who doesn't know what the Masters is? Anybody? Okay. Hey, that's okay. Hunter, you know what the Masters is. Uh, the Masters is essentially pro golf's like Super Bowl. It's like the World Series. It's one of the pro uh, major tournaments. And there's something about pro golf that, and I, it's not like football or basketball, but every time I watch pro golf, we'll get that off the screen. Every time I watch pro golf, there's a bit of me that always thinks, dude, I, I could do this. Like, I could beat these guys. And I don't know if you guys can relate with that. Uh, maybe it's because I'm a thicker cat. And some of these guys... Some of these guys uh, that are playing golf have more of like the dad bod look, right? And if you know me, this is hilarious because I'm a terrible golfer. I've golfed with like Ethan. You've seen me golf. Not good. Jack, you've seen me golf. That was a good day for me. So, um, But uh, basically, bottom line is I was not made to be a golfer. And that's okay. Uh, I don't think I was made to be an athlete in general. Um, I love sports, but if you know me, you know that I have probably the record for the most non-contact sport concussions that anybody's ever had. I've, I've gotten a concussion playing volleyball. I've gotten a concussion playing spike ball. I was playing IM football with Hunter Hammerschmidt. I literally just ran into him. Concussion. Like, legit MRI, like, out for a couple weeks. It was nuts. Then God's saying, like, hey, dude, you're not getting any younger, man. You're 26. You need to stop. Um, but basically, yeah, like that is not my lane. That is not like the thing I was made to do. But we all have something like that, right? We all have something that it feels like, man, I was made for this, right? Luke Spencer, dude's a stat major, big numbers guy. I cannot calculate a tip without pulling out my phone. Like, <laughs> not my lane, was not made for numbers. He's a numbers guy. Amanda, I don't know if you guys know this, Amanda does drag racing, like with cars. She's like, yeah, shout out, that's... That's super sick. Not, that's literally in your lane. You're staying in your lane. And like, yeah, some people are just made for that. And we all have something like that, though, right? We all have something that we feel like, man, I was made for this. This is like something I'm naturally good at, something that uh, feels right. Like, I, I feel purpose in this. And whether or not you feel that or like, man, I, I know exactly what that is for me. When it comes to faith, you'll see where I full circle come around here. Uh, when it comes to faith, we were all created with a purpose. God created us all with a common purpose and a common mission. We all have a lane to run in when it comes to what we were made for. And that's the idea that we're going to be looking at tonight is the idea that we were made for a mission. Uh, and so basically where we're going tonight is I want to highlight two points from scripture that helps us see the mission that we were made for. Uh, and so we're going to be in Matthew 28, which is a very famous passage. It's known as the Great Commission, uh, and we'll be in verse 18 through 20. So uh, it says this. It says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age." Uh, so some context of where we're at in Scripture for this, right? So this is the uh, end of the book of Matthew. This is kind of Jesus' final words. We're about to celebrate Easter where Jesus was put on a cross. Three days later, he, he resurrects. And what he does is he actually appears to his disciples. And he appears to a select group of believers. And this is kind of the tail end of that, right before he ascends into heaven. And so this is kind of a big deal. This is like, you know, these guys have, uh, the, I picture that the disciples, like they've been studying Jesus for three years. They've been following him, doing uh, life with him. They've just seen him get killed and resurrected. And this is the last stuff that he's going to say to them. So it's like a, a big deal. It's like a pay attention moment. And I love how Jesus kind of gets into this, right? He's like, hey guys, literally all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Like that's the biggest like flex power move to, to go into something. He's like, pay attention guys. Like all authority, I have it. Listen to what I'm about to say. And so uh, he's emphasizing that this is a big deal, right? And so we, we as readers of the Bible should be paying attention as we see this. And so um, the, the call that he makes here, right, is therefore go and make disciples of all nations. That's kind of the action step that you can pick out from, from the entire three verses that we looked at. And what's awesome is this tells us 
quite a bit about the nature of discipleship, right? So we know that, that Jesus is talking to his disciples. So these guys already are disciples of Jesus, and he's telling them to go and make disciples. And so we see here the, the nature of discipleship is that it is this up and a down participation. We have to, one, be disciples, but our call is to go make disciples, right? Uh, and so first thing I want us to, to dive into is kind of like, what does it mean to be a disciple? Like, what does that actually mean? We've talked about it a little bit at STUMO this, uh, this semester, but the, the basics of this is a, uh, a disciple is a student. It's someone who is a follower of something. You're an apprentice under someone. You, you uh, follow a leader. You learn under this person. And, and the Bible gives us a ton of pictures of this. But I love particularly Matthew 4.19, uh, where Jesus himself is recruiting kind of his first disciples. And he says this, he says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Come follow me, I will make you fishers of men. And um, straight out of Jesus' mouth, I love like this, this depiction of what it means to be a disciple. And so I kind of pull these, these three things when I think of it. Uh, one, a disciple follows Jesus. Pretty straightforward, right? That's probably uh, the easiest answer when we think of what is a disciple. But we see that here. He says, come follow me right? A, a, a disciple is someone who chooses Jesus's way over their own way, right? And, you know, that is a, a big thing. You hear that a lot of times, like, I've made Jesus the Lord of my life, or I've put my trust in Jesus. That's choosing to follow him, even if what we want might, might be a different route. So it's not always easy, uh, but that is what that means. A disciple is someone who follows Jesus. Secondly, we see a disciple is someone who is transformed by Jesus, Again, he says, I will make you fishers of men. He's there to transform our lives and transform our hearts. And so uh, when we are disciples, our desires begin to change. Our hearts change, our priorities change, relationships might change, character. Uh, some of you guys might be noticing that in your own lives or noticing it in people's lives around you. I know that that was like the biggest like thing for me that was intriguing, right? When I was like trying to learn about faith in college, I was like, these guys' lives look so different and we both call ourselves Christians. And so that is a huge part of being a disciple. And then thirdly, uh, a, a disciple is someone who is on mission with Jesus. We see again in this, in this verse, he says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So in the, the context of this, Jesus is like physically talking to fishermen who by trade like fish, and he's like trying to relate with them. It's like if I was at a pie cat party or something, just like saying to a bunch of guys like, hey, come follow me and I will teach you how to shotgun for men or something. I don't know. I didn't have this in my notes. It was uh, unplanned, off the cuff. Aaron hates when I do that. Um, but Jesus is relating to them and saying like, hey, what you're doing right now with fish, I will send you out to fish for people. I will, you will take part in this mission that I've created you for. And so when we're disciples, we follow Jesus' way. Our hearts are changed and we get to share that with other people. And that is the basis of, of, of being a disciple. The first prereq of like fulfilling this mission that we were made for is being a disciple. And that's the first point that I have for you guys tonight is that we must be disciples if we want to fulfill the mission that we were made for. And, and I think it's important to understand that like being a disciple doesn't mean like you're just a casual fan of Jesus. I think for the longest time, most of my life, I would have considered my, or I would now consider myself a, a casual fan of Jesus or an acknowledger of God. I was like, I know that God's real. Like, I believe that, but it doesn't really affect anything in my life. It's kind of just like my golden ticket. Like, when I die, I'll, like, quickly try and believe that um, just so I can get into heaven, right? That was basically what I believed for most of my life uh, of what faith was all about. But, guys, it is so much more than that. We are created to be disciples, to follow Jesus, to have a relationship with him not just be an acknowledger or a casual fan of him. It's a relationship with God. Uh, and, and what does that practically look like? Like, you know, 2024 CSU, what does this actually look like for me? Um, man, I think it's like consistently trying to get in the word. That's a big one. So I'm like, you know, I'm not batting a thousand here. Like, I'm not perfect. I don't do this I, every single day. I'm not perfect at reading my Bible, but I prioritize it. I want to read the Bible so I can build that relationship with God and know what he says for my life. It, it could also look like turning away from sin and temptation. 
Like those things that I know God doesn't want me doing, when I do those things, I'm not like eager to go talk to God about it. You know, the, those things drive a wedge between me and God. Uh, it could also look like being in community to help yourself stay accountable. That's like Stumo's bread and butter. We have a, a room full of people in a very similar boat trying to grow in their walk with God. And so, like, you know, that's a great way to stay accountable. Or for some of us, maybe it's taking that initial step to follow God. Like, maybe you're, you're thinking, like, dude, that acknowledger of God thing kind of hit. Like, maybe you're in that boat, and you haven't yet thought, like, have I decided to trust in Jesus? And that's totally fine. But I think that that is your first step to becoming a disciple and fulfilling the mission that we were made for. And so I want us to actually just kind of like think about this for a second and discuss this. Nice. Um, so yeah, we're, we're first called to be disciples, right? That is the prereq to this great commission that Jesus is speaking, right? As he's speaking it to his followers, to his disciples. Uh, and so then we move on to kind of the second part of like, what is he actually calling us to do as followers of God? He's saying that we uh, should therefore go and make disciples of all nations, right? So this is, this is kind of the action step now, right? We, we are disciples and we're growing in our walk with God, but now we're called to make disciples, right? And this isn't just like if you're in like a certain like group of Christian, right? It's not just if you're a pastor or you're on staff with Stumo or like you want to lead Bible studies or something. This is, applies to everybody who would call themselves a follower of God. And that's an important thing to understand. I think, uh, again, for so long, I was in that camp of just like acknowledging God. Like that's all that, that it is. But man, we fulfill the mission when we start to uh, be a disciple who makes disciples. And I love Jesus' words here, right? He's saying, make disciples of all nations. Not just like Tim, who's like probably down to be a Christian. Like I think he has like background in it. Like, you know, you're not just trying to pick in your mind, like, I think this person would be likely to respond well. No, he's saying all nations, all peoples, all races, all religions, all countries, right? They are all God's creation, therefore all a part of this big mission that God has made us all for, right? And so God is including us. Like, he absolutely could snap his fingers and be like, all right, everybody's a Christian now, like, just followers of God, robots, but he wants us to choose, right, to follow him, to choose to be his disciples, That's amazing, guys. And so I I want you to think of the idea of, like, how did you get here, right? Like, how on a Wednesday night, some of you guys, like, different ages in in school, probably got homework, probably got Fortnite to play. Do people still play Fortnite? I don't know. But, like, yeah, okay. A lot of claps, a lot of booze. If I play Fortnite, my wife will kill me. Um, But how did you get here, right? There's a lot of things you could be doing. There's a lot of different possibilities of like where you could be at this point in time. But what had to happen for you to decide to want to come listen to a mustache 26 year old tell you about how to grow in your walk with God? And once you start to think about it, it's pretty nuts that what we're reading or what we're celebrating this week, Jesus' resurrection, the commission that he gave shortly after that to a group of about 11 guys in a room carried from 2,000 years ago to now, and we chose, because of that, to sit in this room and learn about our relationship with him. How nuts is it that we're reading about this interaction that happened, and because of that command to share our faith, to make disciples, like we are sitting here in this room. It just points to the bigger truth that God uses his people to reach people. Again, God uses his people to reach people. For almost all of us, it took someone being intentional to either invite you to come to Stumo or to talk to you about God or just show you the love of Christ. Like, that is is amazing, right? What an awesome picture of this mission played out in our lives. Uh, I I think it's crazy. This is Sarah. Uh, It's kind of a random picture of a random woman and a random baby. Um, And none of you probably know who Sarah is, and that's fine. You know, (laughs) what you don't know about Sarah is that she was a Pi Phi at Oklahoma State, and in 2008, in October, she heard the gospel and um, decided to place her trust in Christ. She decided to go all in with God and follow him. And over the course of that semester, she began to learn what it looked like to be a disciple. She grew in her walk with God, understanding of scripture, and ultimately, 
She understood that she was made for a mission, and she began to start sharing her faith with the girls in her sorority. It was at that point she met a girl named Leah, another OSU Pi Fi, who was, again, approached by Sarah, built a relationship. They were friends in their sorority, just two friends normal. They started doing life together. They started talking about their faith, talking about hard things, uh, and over time, she learned what it looked like to be a disciple. And again, she understood that she was made for a mission. She started sharing her faith with girls in her sorority. And Leah met this girl named Sarah. Everybody's like, what? She kind of looks familiar. Um, she's back there. Um, Sarah also was an OSU Pi Fi. And again, you know what the drill is here. Sarah meets Leah. They become friends. And over time, they start spending a lot of time together growing in understanding the Bible. They study scripture. They talk about hard things. They do life. And Sarah understands that she was made for a mission. And that takes her all the way to Fort Collins, Colorado. And she meets a girl named Tacy in 2018. And same thing happens here, guys. She meets Tacy and builds a friendship. And they start to, to do life together. And Tacy understands that she was made for a mission, and she devotes her time in college to growing as a disciple. She, she starts sharing that with her family and her friends. And that brings us to today. Well, 2023 is when she met a girl named Michaela. And Michaela, in October, what is that, 16 years from when Sarah Brown decided to place her trust in Christ. And, and Michaela places her trust in Christ. And that chain is carried on, and it will continue to carry on. A lot of us in this room, maybe not so much the guys, but some of the girls can be attributed back to Sarah Brown's investment in sharing that faith with other people. And it's true for all of us, guys. Like, God uses his people to reach people. We are all here because we have a Sarah Brown in our life, someone we've never met who decided to invest their life in, in giving their life away for the kingdom. And that's amazing. Like, I, I will go to heaven and I will meet someone who shared their faith with someone who shared their faith, ultimately to, to lead to this guy named Luke, who was in my fraternity that was intentional to talk about God with me. So, who's next? Who's going to be in this room a year from today because of your guys' acceptance and in, in, in going all in with this mission that we were made for? Guys, these girls aren't anything special, and I'm sorry, girls. I mean it with care. Uh, there's nothing special about these girls. They just were girls who loved their sorority. They loved their friends. And most importantly, they loved God and the mission that they were made for. And so that's our second point, guys. Be disciples who make disciples. We're all part of a chain of the gospel. Don't let the chain end with you. Don't be the last link um, in the chain. So now I actually want to invite Dr. Chris up to share a little bit about what this has looked like in his life. So give it up for Dr. Chris. Is it on? Oh, yeah. What's up, folks? Uh, thanks for coming in tonight. Uh, so my name's Chris. I'm a SIG app, and I'm a senior here. Yeah. Uh, so growing up, I was uh, I went to church on Christmas and Easter. You call me a CEO, uh, Christmas and Easter only. Um, and... Uh, so in high school, I played a few sports. Um, I was like, my identity was the big athlete guy who was also bigger at the parties and just drank a lot and did all that stuff. And I just wanted to be the guy that everyone liked. And I just cared what everyone thought about me. And the mo biggest thing was to be the best athlete and to be the most popular kid. That was wh what I cared about. Um, and then senior year of high school came around. And I had a few like different offers to go play football at places. And the biggest factor in me um, choosing here was I thought people would think it would be the most impressive because um, that's, what I th that's what I cared about was um, trying to be impressive to other people. So I cared about what others thought about me in that decision, which ultimately like led me to here. And then so I came to CSU and that, that athlete uh, partying guy just continued on worse. And um, any day we didn't have practice, I was just putting more dents in Burnett's bottles. Um, than you could imagine. Uh, so at the end of my freshman year, um, the whole pre-med and football thing wasn't working out and I was kind of getting caught up in both and I couldn't really do both. So I decided to quit football 
And that's when like I was like, oh, my my whole like my whole life I was playing football and sports and now that's gone. So I was kind of looking for other things to fill me up. So I was like, oh, I join, I'll join SIG app, focus more on school uh, and just put purpose into getting good grades and success and then try and become a doctor. Um, but all these things weren't really fulfilling me and just kept le left leaving me wanting more. So then it came around fall, sophomore year. Um, I met a girl named Ella in my o organic chemistry class, um, who's actually my girlfriend now. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, she, she, chemistry, we had, the, yeah, nice. Uh, she's a genius. Um, anyways, so I met her and she invited me to Stumo, and I was like, oh, sweet, free crazy K's, let's go. Uh, and, and, uh, and I met Matt Smith, and the first thing he said to me was, sick mullet, bro. Uh, and so, yeah, and so yeah, I was like, oh, sweet. Uh, and then I ended up meeting with Matt. He shared with me this, the gospel with me, and that's where I came to Christ. And that was the best identity I've found. Uh, my trust and faith in Christ has given me the purpose and joy. And it's better than all the other identities I was searching for. I didn't have to worry about what others thought of me. And it also gave me more focus and direction in other things I was involved in, like my fraternity and uh, the whole pre-med thing. So ever since that day, uh, I met Matt. We've been meeting weekly for two years now, and he taught me a lot about walking with Christ, and he, we've become good friends, and he actually asked me to join his football team, and it was funny. He made me send my huddle film in as if uh, being on the team here wasn't enough, <laughs> uh, so so if you try to be on that team, you, it's higher standards than playing Division One. so uh, I guess, I guess, so that's how, that's how Matt wants it. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, so meeting up with Matt, um, he, he helped me follow the Great Commission as Mitch has been talking about tonight and sharing the gospel with uh, other SIG Eps and just guys in the fraternity and, and other guys that I uh, go to class with and stuff. So with what I learned from Matt, um, we started a Bible study in SIG Ep, and it was me and two other guys and now it's really cool to see what God's done with um, uh, over the past one and a half years with 10 to 15 guys now showing up. So that's awesome. and. Just some advice for you guys is to get plugged in with to Stumo and find someone just to step further in your faith um, to meet up with. I know it worked out. Uh, it was really awesome for me to just be meeting with someone like Matt, but there's so many guys and girls in here that can help you with that, that are just a step further along that you can meet with. And then um, the, free gift, the free gift of grace from God has changed my life, and I know it will change yours. Thank you, guys. Nice. Dr. Chris. You know what? I'm just going to call you Chris now because you're my friend and your identity is in Christ. Heck yeah. Um, it's been amazing. Like to what Chris said, it's been amazing to kind of watch his journey uh, and the impact that that's had. How many SIG Eps are here? Raise your hand. Like that's percentage wise, like a, a solid amount of people in the room. And I mean, like, man, Chris, you were a, a huge part of that. And, and God used you in some amazing ways. And God can use all of us, right? Um, so we want to be disciples who make disciples. That is the, the call of our life. That is the mission we were made for. And so now that we kind of understand that, what does that actually look like? How do we live this out in our time in college? Whether we have a semester left or like a couple weeks left, uh, or we're a freshman and we've got the rest of our college career. Uh, I think it's awesome because Jesus actually gives us the playbook here. He gives us the how-to, right? He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. So that tells us right there what, what we're called to do in making disciples, right? It's in, so the first thing we see in this is that it's called to baptize them. Now, he's not talking about like Nacho Libre just going around like dunking the guy um, with a bowl of water, just like dunking people's heads. Please don't do that. Don't say Stumo said to do that either. Um, but what Jesus is saying here is that we're called to lead people to that place where they can commit themselves to Christ. Like, like uh, Chris was saying when Matt had met with him, he had talked to him about his faith and had opened the door for him to accept Christ and, and trust in him, right? That is the calling for us. And, you know, baptism is a lot like a wedding ring, right? It's a, it's a physical display of the heart commitment that we make, right? And so just like at the altar, when I uh, said my vows and committed to Aaron, we put rings on as this like declaration of our commitment to each other. The same thing is true with baptism in our faith. It's a public declaration of the heart commitment that we make. And so uh, we really want to be looking for those opportunities to lead someone 
to that. And it doesn't have to be complicated, right? We'll look at the practicals here in a second. But the first one is baptize them. Secondly, we're called to teach them and teach them everything I've commanded. And if you're like me, you hear that and you go, holy smokes, dude. Like, I, I, I'm new here. I don't know everything you've commanded, God. How can I teach that to someone else? Um, you're in good company. I feel the same way sometimes. But what's awesome is, is Jesus is saying here that we need to just engage others in, in Scripture. If you're a follower of God and you're growing in your walk with God, you already have enough tools in the tool belt to help a new believer start to grow in their faith. It takes being a disciple and growing in your walk to be able to do this, right? Be a disciple who makes disciples. And so I think some things of like how this could practically look um, could be just sharing your story with someone, right? If we're looking to, to have an opportunity for someone to hear the gospel, the story of Jesus, it could be just sharing your story with someone. Like, man, I would look for times with my roommates and just say like, hey guys, this is something that's been like really cool that I've been learning in my life, right? It's a normal like friend just talking to their friend about things going on in their life, right? So share your story with someone. It could be reading the Bible with the people around you. Let God's word do the teaching. That's an amazing way to, to help teach someone is read the Bible with them. It could be praying for opportunities to share the gospel, right? God loves to answer this prayer. Like praying for opportunities, like God, give me, a, give me an opportunity with a roommate or a family friend just to have a good conversation about God, right? God loves to answer that. Or it could just be inviting someone to Stumo or church. Remember, a lot of us like the reason we're here is because someone was intentional to invite us to come and check out our faith. But above all, guys, we're not like some paratroopers sent in on like a solo mission and it's like all on me to get this done. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, I was like, that's weird. Um, we're not alone in this is basically what I'm saying. Like, and, and I love how just clean the Bible is. Jesus ends this whole thing, this whole charge, this command, this playbook by saying this, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we're not alone. We're not doing this by ourselves. We're not doing this uh, on our own power, but Jesus is the one who is opening the doors. Jesus is the one who is creating opportunities. He's changing hearts in our friends. He's, he's leading people to ask questions. And if it feels daunting, guys, just turn to Jesus, lean on him, uh, and he will help us. So guys, I, I want to leave us just with a couple applications of how we can apply this in our lives going forward. And the first one is just be a disciple. I think uh, the doctor summed it up really well with find someone to, to help lead you in this, right? That is the, the best way. I had a guy named Luke that I would meet up with regularly. It wasn't every week. It wasn't like this huge time commitment, but I would go to him and I would ask him questions about things going on in my life, things about faith that I was curious about. And he would help me navigate these things. Like I was a like wannabe alpha male frat boy. Like I was going from that to like, I'm a campus preacher now. Like what the heck? Like I had a lot of room to go, man. <laughs> like, and he helped me navigate what this looked like. And so that is uh, the first step is be a disciple. Secondly, pray for an opportunity. Pray for opportunities to share your story or share your, um, the gospel with the people in your life. I know that uh, this is an awesome prayer, like I said, that God loves to answer. He loves to give us opportunities. And then lastly, guys, share your story with someone this week. And this can be daunting, but I, I, I truly want every single person in this room to try and do this. Who is the, the family member or the roommate or the friend that you have that you know needs to hear this? If your life has been radically changed by Jesus, it is the most important thing that could ever happen to you. Wouldn't you want that to happen in someone, someone's life that you care about? So take an opportunity, like just saying like, hey, yeah, this is what's been going on in my life. I've been loving learning about this. Like, what do you think? Like, what do you think about faith? And if they say like, I, I don't care, that's okay. At least you took the opportunity to do that. Guys, we were made for a mission and that mission is to be a disciple who makes disciples. Let me pray for us. We'll get out of here. Um, God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for just um, allowing us to come together and learn from you, Lord. How powerful is it that uh, you gave us this mission uh, that we were made for, God, to be a disciple who makes disciples. I pray that all of us in this room would, would carry that into the rest of this semester, that we would seek to grow in our walk with God and we would seek uh, to make disciples in the people's lives around us. 
So God, I, I know that you're there to help us, and I know that uh, you are with us, and so we just pray uh, for this room, and it's in your name I pray. Amen.